I'm Donna from Nastasia.com. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet awareness ribbon pot holders. I highly recommend using 100% cotton or 100% wool yarn. However, if they are for decorative purposes only, you can use 100% acrylic yarn. You have to be careful with acrylic with pot holders because at certain temperatures the acrylic yarn will melt. Let's start with the crocheted ribbon. You'll need some medium weight yarn and a size G hook. This pattern also requires the use of stitch markers to mark certain stitches. You can use traditional stitch markers or just use safety pins, paper clips, or even tie on a piece of yarn. Begin by making a slip knot, then chain 36. On chain number 7 and chain number 29, you will need to place a stitch marker. On this seventh chain, Grab a stitch marker and place it into the side of the chain. Then continue on with making your chains. When you reach chain number 29, place another stitch marker. It's important to mark these certain stitches for when you do the edging. Continue on until you reach a total of 36 chains. Next, skip the first chain and do a single crochet in the next chain and one single crochet across every chain on the row. By time you are finished with this row, you will have completed 35 single crochet stitches. After making the last single crochet, chain one and turn your work. Now we're going to do one single crochet in the next 12 stitches. This time marking single crochet number 7 and number 10. On single crochet number 7, place another stitch marker. 8, 9, 10. On this 10th single crochet, place another stitch marker. 11, 12, now you will do two single crochets in each of the next 11 stitches. Here's the first stitch that has two single crochets in it. Here's the second set of two single crochets. And the third one. Once you have completed the 11 stitches that have two single crochets in each, now we'll do one single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches, marking single crochet number 3 and number 6 this time. Here's the marker for single crochet number 3, and this one marks stitch number 6. Continue single crocheting until the end of the row. Your work will look something like this. The reason we have so many stitch markers is for when we twist the ribbon into position, we will use the stitch markers to know precisely in which stitches to connect the ribbon together. We're going to be crocheting the edging while the ribbon is upside down. We're first going to crochet along this part, then we'll connect the ribbon through both layers here. Crochet up and around, then connect here again. Next we'll crochet all along the ribbon here. Connect here, then finish up along this last edge of the ribbon. Once you reach the end, you have the option of connecting a contrasting color yarn or continue using the same color. I'll continue just with the same yarn. Chain one and turn your work. Do one single crochet in the next six stitches. Now we're going to connect the two ends of the ribbon. Note the two stitch markers we need to pay attention to. Insert your hook into the first marked stitch on top, then the second one underneath. Remove the stitch markers if needed. Yarn over, draw up a loop, and finish your single crochet. As you can see, we've just connected the two strips at the bottom part of the ribbon.
turn your ribbon upside down again and single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. On this last single crochet, which is a corner, do three single crochet stitches in it. Then do three single crochet stitches in the other corner right next to it. Now do five single crochet stitches. Look for those upside down V's so you know where to insert your hook. It's time to connect the ribbon again through both layers. Insert your hook in the marked stitch on the top layer, then pierce through the marked stitch on the layer underneath. Yarn over, draw up a loop, and finish your single crochet stitch there. And you can remove the markers. Now, do one single crochet in each stitch around the loop part of the ribbon. You'll stop at the stitch before the next stitch marker. Connect the two layers as we did before. Remove the markers and finish your single crochet stitch. We're almost finished. Do five single crochet stitches. Now, on the very last stitch, which is a corner, do three single crochets in it. Then reach over and do two single crochet stitches in the final corner. Slip stitch to the first single crochet to finish your work. If you are using this ribbon by itself, you can cut a shorter tail and weave in the ends. However, if you are sewing this on to a pot holder, leave a longer tail, cut it, then secure it. And here's the finished ribbon, ready to be sewn on a pot holder, or it can be used by itself. If you want to use the ribbon as a refrigerator magnet, you can get a roll of magnetic tape and a hot glue gun. Cut strips of magnetic tape, add some glue, then place the strips on the ribbon. I like to put the magnets on in three places for a secure fit. Once we're finished with the ribbon, now we can crochet the pot holder. You'll need an H size hook and some medium weight yarn. Make a slip knot and then make 36 chains. Skip the first chain, then single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Then single crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the end, make your 35th single crochet. Then pivot your work. We'll be working into the other side of the starting chain. Do a single crochet on the other side of the stitch you just worked. Then work a single crochet on the other side of every chain. Look for those upside down V's to know where to put your hook. Once completed, you will have 35 single crochet stitches on the other side of the chain. Next, do not slip stitch or chain one, but instead work a single crochet on the top of the first single crochet you did before. 
you will now be working in spirals. Keep working a single crochet in each stitch. Even when you get to the other end, keep working around and around in single crochet stitches. Eventually your work will look something like this after about 8 or 9 rows. The pot holder will start to fold over on its ends a little bit now. This one had about 15 or 16 rounds completed. It folds over onto itself. You will eventually sew this back seam after we sew on the crocheted ribbon first. We can also make a hanging loop for the pot holder. Start off with a longer tail, do a slip knot, and chain 7. Slip stitch to the first chain. Chain 1 and do 12 single crochet stitches in the ring. Once you have 12 single crochets in there, cut a long tail and pull it through. Here is the front of the pot holder. We can place the hanging loop on top, turn over the pot holder, and grab the tail ends from inside to secure the hanging loop. Then reach inside and knot the tail ends. This will secure the hanging loop and also hide the ends inside the pot holder. Next, we'll attach the ribbon to the pot holder. I recommend pinning the ribbon to the pot holder before you sew it on. This way, it will hold it in place. Take the long tail end and thread it through a yarn needle. I try to make the stitches as small and inconspicuous as possible by going over existing stitches. Remember to avoid going through the outer side of the pot holder underneath. Once the ribbon is sewn on, you can sew the back seam of the pot holder. Again, I like to pin the seams before sewing. There are several different ways to sew seams. And in this case, I like to weave back and forth between going underneath the outer loops of the left and right top chains. Then secure your tail end. And this is the finished pot holder. I hope this video has helped you and please visit www.nastasia.com for more tips and tricks on creative self-sufficient living.